Hey, um, today I want to talk to you guys and show you nibs and pen holders. Um, I get a bunch of questions like this on a daily, especially about um, inking comics. So I just want to give you the rundown on a lot of the basic nibs that you're going to run into that you might be interested in. Okay, so this is a pen holder. These are like old school. Um, it's a lost art. I don't know a lot of people who are inking by hand, so a lot of, um, most people have switched to computer inking on tablet in Illustrator or whatever. Um, a lot of other people will use a brush. I moved from this initially to a brush. This is a great place to start. A lot of people stay with this. Um, I found a brush was easier to handle because with the nibs, sometimes you'll run into um, problems with it catching or if you're not using the right type of paper, uh, the nib will actually um, pull fibers from a regular sketchbook and you'll end up with like a clump of fibers on the end which suck and it makes your line really um, flat um, and squishy <laughs> not crispy the type of paper you want to use um, I'm using a manga pad um, this is a really smooth hot press or plate surface the surface is actually sized with a bit of chalk which makes the ink really crisp okay when you get a nib from the art store, um, take it home and uh, rinse it off with rubbing alcohol because it comes with an oil on it that protects it from rusting um, while it's being shipped and displayed and stored. But the oil will affect your ability to use it properly. Okay, so rubbing alcohol is your friend. So I'm just dipping it into my Dr. Martin's Black Star Waterproof Indie Ink in matte. And this is a Speedball C6, which is a basic calligraphy pen. Okay, and it gives you basic flat strokes. Okay, so this is a basic um, drawing nib. If I push harder, I get wider strokes, but they're regular strokes okay this little um, um, I don't know what this is called actually but there's a there's a little metal part on top of it it actually allows it to hold much more ink um, the ink is held in here by surface tension and it holds more than you would regularly okay so I can get good hash marks this is bad form down here this little hook at the bottom you want to start and stop without hooks. Okay, that's good ink form. Okay, that's a basic Speedball C6. Um, <clears throat> there's C4, C5, um, as they go lower, actually, they get wider, which is kind of counterintuitive. Um, C6, I think, is the thinnest you can get. Okay. Yeah, I'm just wiping this off with um, some toilet paper. I used to rinse them with water, but I don't really recommend that. I found that rinsing them with water really um, made them go rusty quite quickly. So I do what I can to just wipe them off with um, some paper towel or toilet paper. Okay, that should be all right. Um, the C's, Speedball C series, um, are more of a lettering series. So I'm going to show you with this. Okay. 
Okay, this gives you a nice italic. So it's quite wide. This is a C4. Also keep in mind um, that there are left and right nibs. Okay, so if you're right-handed, the nib is actually bent and stroked on, on one side. Um, for right-handed people and it's stroked on another side for left-handed people. Okay, so that's really quite wide and I'm running out of ink. So you can see how um, that runs out. Okay, so these don't give you much variation um, like pressing harder isn't going to give me a wider stroke. Okay, they're uh, fairly rigid, but you get um, variations in the stroke by your curve, and these are good for lettering. I think the C stands for calligraphy. Ha ha ha, the C series. And I just, I've never actually used this one. I bought a C1 and it's giant sized and I just want to try it. I've never actually hand lettered with this. Wee. Wow, that ran out really quick. But how exciting. Hand lettering. Wee! It's a lost art. I don't know why I'm writing Nabob. Wow, okay. So with this, I can get one letter at a time. Nabob. The Roast of Champions. Okay, so I don't know how much use this would be um, for drawing. Oh, but they're so fun. Nibs are just so great. Especially when you've got the right paper. I mean, honestly, uh, splurge for like a Paris bleed proof paper or um, this is a manga pad paper. Um, it makes such a huge, huge difference. Okay, so those are the C's by Speedball. Okay, this is a B and it's got a round tip. And uh, these are also called poster pens and you'll see why in a sec. Just because they're really just for writing, regular. Ooh, ew. They, this is weird, I don't like it. <laughs> Do not like putting it away. It's kind of strange. It's got like an angled tip on the end with a round bit. And it's big. It's actually kind of replicating a big fat felt tip marker. That's what this feels like. That's what it feels like. It's, it's 
it's like it's like a sharpie all right I had to try it again <laughs> okay so that's the speed balls the basic range um, there's a lot of these These are ball pens. These are basic straight lines. Uh, I think this is school pen. Yep, school pen, basic straight line. This is an artist fine. And I'm going to briefly show you them. There's not a huge lot of difference between them, to be honest. Basically is what you like to work with. I hate this one because it feels like it's scratching into the paper But I will show you <coughs> Oh, I don't even like those anymore Okay, so this is a hunt ball pen. This is the fine ball pen. And this is a standard, um, very simple, fine pen. This is actually a really great uh, multi use, basic kind, kind of pen. There's a larger one that will give you a broader stroke. running out of ink. Okay, be careful when you're using any kind of a pen. Don't go backwards this way because it'll actually catch on your paper and it'll flick ink everywhere. I know that because I've done it. Okay, basic, nice, um, bowl pen. It's nice. I like the feel of it. Okay, there's a larger one as well. All of these cost less than a dollar. This is a school pen. All of these are going to give you very similar strokes. Scratchy. This is actually digging fibers off my paper. Hate you, school pen. Ugh. Away. Let's see. And I don't like that. It'll pick up fibers and then make like a fuzz. There's actual fuzz at the end of this. Bye. Be gone. Okay, these are the fine pens. This has more give to it. Okay, which is nice for drawing. Because you have that... Um, that ability to add pressure to your pen and so define in the objects um, with lighter and thinner and thicker lines to define front and back edges of an, of an object or define something that's further in shadow or create texture or um, See, that's pretty impressive. 
this is a nice nib. This, what is this nib? Well, <laughs> this is a mapping pen. <laughs> it's a uh, it's a hunt two o one. I don't know. I need glasses. Mapping pen. This is an artist. I didn't realize the mapping pen had so much give. That's nice. That's my favorite by the way, is that kind of dynamic line. This is an artist's pen. Finest, hand finest, 104. It's crooked. That is really nice and fine. What's nice about this as a finest pen is you can press and have a variety of um, pressures on this and it gives you the same width of line, the same very fine width, regardless of how much pressure you're putting on. Which is great if you're trying to hatch or fill in texture or whatever you're trying to do. That's nice too. Wow, and that just keeps going and going. It's holding a lot of ink, which is really nice. Finest. Okay, that just kept going and going. <laughs> that was pretty nice. Okay, so this is a basic um, pen holder. This is what's called a crow quill holder, or it will hold a quill, crow quill or flex quill. Um, this is a flex quill, the silver one. And this is a crow quill. The crow quill and the pen holder were my favorite um, for a long time. For at least a year, I used them. And the reason is because of how um, dynamic a line you can get. This will take a lot of pressure. Oops. and is really beautiful to use. It's very similar to the mapping pen. Um, but I found it had the, oh, sorry, I keep running out of ink. I found it had the best, um, or it most accurately reflected or um, replicated a brush. And I used this before I was ready to use a brush and ink just with a brush. Now, this takes a little bit of um, getting used to because the Flex Quill is a soft nib, so it flexes really, really easily. The mapping pen didn't flex as easily and it actually, the mapping pen gave you a little more control. The flex quill is very, um, it will, this is sideways, so that's nice, but it will change thickness very easily depending on how much pressure you put on it. 
Okay, so it's very brush-like in that way, but is has more control than a brush. And if you want to start inking, I'd recommend that you practice first because um, you kind of have to, you can't just draw like you would with a felt tip. You have to consider which way your nib is going and turn your paper actually to, um, uh, to get other sides, so to speak, because the nib doesn't travel this way at all, <laughs> ever. Okay, so that's pretty much... Um, my little demo on the different type of nibs that are readily available in art stores. And uh, I'm going to scan these like I do and put them on the website. Okay, so you can check that out at uh, theartistasentrepreneur.com. And when is this going up? Ah. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Oh, mm -hmm.